In esports, a split second can change everything. The right play can secure you tournaments and money or cement your reputation. To put it simply, it can change your life. Do you consider that? He did. Oh! He sees him and he slaps him down back of the skull. No! Looking. Breaks Nobby's backs. Never before seen. Your champions of IEM Cologne. But in the same way, a misplay can ruin you. One wrong click, errant skill shot, or misplaced utility can scream disaster. Ben is going to cut them off on the back line. God's strength and worse, a storm hammer. He's done the board. Board. Oh, no! Four seconds on on sock, and now maybe I'll go the other way, but you just won, my man. Moments like that can really destroy a person's psyche. At the very highest level of play, one stupid mistake can haunt you for a long time. And due to the nature of esports, sometimes you become known for your biggest mistakes. He's gonna have to use, oh he can't, no, no burst, so no smart. burst, oh my god, so genius. So smart, he couldn't burst because of the super. But will she get digs? It's over! Down, oh, he oh, 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 what and the bell one doesn't what care! He still got Ziggy oh, Michael's down! Oh my god! Will she oh, get down? Will she get down like this? What are you standing what are you up standing for? Up for? Why? Why? Oh my god! Now, if you're lucky, you can escape the life sentence of humiliation. Not that your record is ever clean, of course. The internet is forever. But some people have been able to take a terrible situation and turn it to their benefit, flipping one monumental screw-up into a light-hearted meme. Instead of letting it eat you, you can own it. Like, I always, like, wanted a spot for myself. Like, oh, that's Summit Box right there, Summit Box. Now when you die to a Molotov by yourself, it's called pulling a Summit. It's kind of like, kind of like created the name for ourselves a little bit. <laughs> And one man has been able to flip an awful play into his own personal brand of self-deprecating humor. Ready to take a fight. Flash over. How do you... Just canceled. Wait. That was all Cancel the... just canceled it. I am, of course, referring to Mark Robert Lamont, better known as Cadrill, professional jungler turned LEC caster by day and sardonic streamer by night. A man whose unique charm and unprecedented knowledge not only allowed him to produce one of the most rousing career stories in recent history, but also turned him into a bit of a streaming sensation. And I have never known defeat. <clears throat> Welcome then, bitch. The question is, how? How has Cadrill gone from a middle of the pack pro with an unfortunate history to one of the most recognizable broadcast talents in League of Legends? How has he cultivated an audience who canonizes his words, turning him into one of the fastest growing streamers on Twitch? And most importantly, why did he just cancel? I, I don't even remember what that, uh, I'm so confused. Why do we have to show that? Come on, guys. Uh, that's probably the worst. We won't get the slow mo. Just to recap, he flashed over the wall to Alt Ezreal and then immediately canceled his own ultimate by right clicking. So, who is this spectacle Don man who apparently stole his gamer tag from a WoW Arena teammate? Well, when he's not live tweeting about Ferrari's F1 woes, you can find him casting in the League of Legends European Championship, smurfing in ranked, and of course, playing nice with his Twitch chat. High C drill, juiced came back from the dentist and my mouth is feeling numb. The amp like I'm having a lift. Anyways, have a great stream. Less than three. Shut the f up. But Cadrill wasn't always analyzing League 24-7. Instead, he was playing. As early as 2015, Cadrill was hopping between different regional EU teams before finally landing on the UK-based H2K. Santorin on towards that back line and Cadrill's hit one. Still, they get reckless and H2K somehow survived. They've lost one. Now they're looking for a little bit more. Cadrill gets the presence of mind to jump on towards Broxham and Sheriff gets another. Fnatic went for the engage, but they fall apart in the hands of H2K. Now, H2K was a big step for Cadrill's young career, and although he was sharing time, let's not discount the fact that Cadrill was playing at Europe's highest level. And that comes with a lot of stress, responsibility, and pressure. Just because you aren't on the G2s and fanatics of the world doesn't mean you aren't under a microscope, fighting for your position and proving your worth. 
With enough pressure like that, mistakes are bound to happen, and in a game with as much APM as League of Legends, misinputs are commonplace. The difference is that when it comes to the best players on the top teams, their blunders are usually easier to forget, or at the very least, forgive. But unfortunately for Kadrill, his misplay ended up being pretty memorable. One to one in the tower is a dragon advantage as well. Ready to take a fight. Flash over. How do you... Just cancelled. Wait. That was... Kadrill just cancelled it. Yes, in game one of the EU LCS spring split against Vitality, Kadrill found himself in a very opportune position. He flashed over the Raptor wall and had the enemy Ezreal right where he wanted him. Unfortunately, after casting his Malzahar ult, Kadrill immediately cancelled it. H2K lost the team fight and eventually they lost the game. So I flash ulted the Ezreal because look at him, he's completely running it. Okay. And what happens here is I cancel my ult by accident. I pressed RE by accident. Now, in the grand scheme of things, this loss might not have made a difference. First of all, they were already technically losing the game, and even if they won, it's unlikely their seeding would have changed. But the play ended up affecting Kajal in a different and bigger way. It really messed with his mental. You see, to make matters worse, at the time, he was already dealing with extremely difficult mental health issues. So although the moment wasn't that big of a deal to anyone other than him, it just made a bad situation even worse. What I had personally been dealing with was getting worse, and I wasn't... The only thing that I was like latching onto still was my confidence in my gameplay. Um, that was like the only thing that I had going for me at the time, but that was fading because of the stage games I was playing bad. I was really distracted, my mind really wasn't in it. So I just got worse and worse and worse, so everything was kind of falling apart around me. Cadrill's confidence in his gameplay, something he once trusted, started to decline, and seeing players like Cap succeed in the mid lane made Cadrill doubt his position in the game. So in an effort to pump some life into his career, Cadrill started to experiment in solo queue, and eventually he would end up swapping roles from mid lane to jungle. So that was the only like positive thing for me, was just like, I would queue up and play jungle and just get distracted emotionally from everything else. So I said to the coaches, I had the stupidest idea ever. Um, I was like, hey, let me play jungle in week four of the LCS. So obviously we went into that weekend, we got absolutely destroyed. <laughs> and I said, you know what, I suck at everything. Uh, you guys just kick me or I'll leave whatever the f you want. We'll just cancel this contract and I'm, I'm out. After the swap, Kadrill hopped from team to team before getting signed to the org that he would eventually become synonymous with, Excel. And he changed something else too. Kadrill began to pour all of his time into studying the game, trying to understand it at the most macro level, even at the expense of his own personal play. However, not everything went as planned. He looked much more comfortable as a jungler, but he still couldn't help his team get the results they were looking for. And so, in November of 2020, Kadrill made the decision to retire from competitive play. I tried my hardest to push myself and the team that I was on to be as successful as possible, but in the end, um, we weren't able to achieve the results. And I can only really, um, I can only really blame myself for that. Now, it was also around this time that Kadrill started to lend his expertise to the broadcast desk at several events, including EU Masters and Worlds 2020. And in that same retirement video, Kadrill announced that being on the desk gave him a new sense of purpose and that he would be transitioning to a freelance talent position. And with that, there was no shortage of big names giving him a vote of confidence. Shortly thereafter, the LEC announced Kadrill as part of their on-air talent for the 2021 season, a chance that he did not take for granted. The community sentiment was really well received in the fact that they hadn't had a pro player on the desk for a while since uh, Deficio stepped down and I could get my quote-unquote pro player perspective to people who might not think of the game in certain ways, which gave me a lot of satisfaction to know that people learned something. The new LEC promised professional level analysis with witty banter, and well, that's exactly what the audience got. Please start the game. <laughs> can you please? I'm writing right now. Can, I swear there was can a you button start the game? Press the button. button. Get it uh, going. But Karen, Kedro. Yeah. Ka Karen? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you just call me Karen? <laughs> Whoa. Get in position. Have we got his face in there? We, nice. Yeah, he's... Okay, he's quite big, actually. I need to reposition. That's Yay. what they all say about the Ankos. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, but that, why... You shouldn't be called Kobe, you should be called Sam. Okay. So then Sam, that's fair. Sam, Mark, and Dracos. SMD. 
Yeah, okay, yeah, that's that's an abbreviation. Cajal is in no way the first pro turn caster, but he fits seamlessly into the LEC, a broadcast known for its unique humor and wide array of content. Cajal? Hello? You paused during the show. H how do you even do that? Do you know how League of Legends works? I mean, if you get a bug, a, a pink spike, you just pause the game, you tell the referee something went wrong, and if he asks you or push you for questions or answers, you just alt F4. You just disconnect. Disconnect from the game. Like you're trying to disconnect from this meeting and disconnect from your responsibilities. Mark? Mark? An ally has disconnected. Mark? Actually, Gadriel didn't just fit in, he stood out. He was an instant fan favorite, and for a multitude of reasons. On top of his charisma and humor, Gadriel's pro pedigree really propelled him. Even to this day, some long-standing casters get hate from fans who might think they shouldn't have certain takes if they've never played the game professionally. And as unfounded as many of these criticisms may be, Cadrill was different. He had a unique perspective on the game, and a lot of people could trust his opinion due to his lived experiences. Even his contemporaries noticed just how special he was on the team, but Cadrill is adamant that he owes everything to them. Vedius is extremely, extremely talented. Dracos as well was pushing me quick shot. Shocks as well on the desk. Like the LEC has a a talent team that if you go into it and you just accept that you're a sponge and you just take in all of these experienced opinions, you know, Shocks has been in esports for I don't know how many years. So yeah, I'm very, very grateful for the LEC uh, and Vedius especially. They kind of taught me everything. Now, during all of this time through swapping roles and changing career paths, Cadrill was also working on something else, his stream. As early as January 2017, Cadrill has been streaming on Twitch, but it wasn't until halfway through 2020, as Cadrill was gaining popularity as a caster, that he started to take his stream more seriously. And almost overnight, Cadrill jumped from a few hundred viewers to thousands. And people were tuning into his streams for the same reason they loved seeing him on the desk. To start, he was cracked. It's hard to overstress just how good Cadrill is at this game. Sure, looking back now, as a pro, he maybe wasn't the most memorable. But remember, this is a guy who played two different roles at the highest level of professional play. Taking that talent to rank solo queue, he was farming, but he was also losing his mind. Ah, oh, your strat ult is here as well. Oh, where's your, where's your strat ult now, Where's your circle jungle? Oh, card the salt as well! Card the salt as well! Yes, 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 yes! More! More! On top of that, Cadrill's unfiltered dry humor gave you an experience you could really only get from him. Get your frustrated bitch, bitch, but stop blaming Sekiro or I'll come over there and show you what a real Makiri counter now feels what? like. Now what, Robert? Now what, Robert? Huh? My second name is Robert. Only one in this Robert in this town, bitch. <laughs> nice, you saved me. Do not I, clip I, I that. Every time I boil the eggs, they always come out raw. How long do you boil X for, bruh? It's always f***ing raw on the inside. How is how cringe is that? Seven minutes? He even popularized that's illegal, a term to describe something in league that is out of left field, idiotic, or generally ill-advised. The phrase now lives within the canon of League to the point where everyone knows what it means and everyone uses it. And maybe best of all, Cadrill was able to take that once horrific moment and turn it into a joke that was no longer at his expense. He made the casting call his sub notification, meaning he literally makes money whenever he's reminded of that blunder. Flash over, just cancelled. Wait, Cadrill just cancelled it. Cadrill finally even got some extra vindication after a certain storied professional made the same mistake he did all those years ago. Oh, he cancelled it! He cancelled it! He did RE! <laughs> As 2021 went on, Cadrill's stream only got bigger, and some of his streams even reached tens of thousands of viewers. By early 2022, Cadrill wound up back home, where he was signed as a content creator for XL. 
Since joining Excel again, things have been continuing to trend upwards for Cadrill. He's now one of the fastest growing league streamers on the platform, and things don't appear to be slowing down. We can all learn a lot from Cadrill's story. Opportunities come out of bizarre situations. Even what feels like a massive screw up can lead to something great. And if you truly love something, do whatever you can to make it a part of your everyday life. If you told me this would be my life two or three years ago, I wouldn't believe you because I was too shy to even step in front of a camera or take a picture. Uh, I was too reserved to even have a long form conversation and I never streamed. I would never expect you to tell me what I am today. So I guess life is full of surprises, huh? But the most important lesson we can learn is to never take ourselves too seriously. We saw the animation of a TF red card appear in top lane. So I'd love to see the replay of that cancel. Caps saves his team on the top side. And the TF ultimate goes on cooldown. You do have a lot of experience with cancels. So we'll see if we can get it back up for you, Kajor. We've got a crowd, but <laughs> ooze on these now. <laughs> At least a crowd can express how I feel. Yeah pronunciation guides for um, things that aren't like super obvious even though even though I can take a good guess at this one it's not like it's not super obvious that it's you know I'm, I'm gonna say Mark Robert Lamont but it could easily be Mark Robert Lamont or something right if he's like I know he's like European so anyway